Wow, praise God, man. Last week was radical. We talked about the false teachers, and we talked about the parable of the two builders. I was kind of fired up on the false teachers, but the message of the two builders was radical because it's not about uh, the, the money. It's not about, you know, it's about Jesus in our house and how if it's built on the sand, it will fail the test. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, talks about that. Welcome to Growing in His Word, man. God bless you guys. and Welcome back. Look, we talked about the house and how our house needs to be built. It's important that the two houses that they were talking about were not their external appearance, but the Pharisees and the scribes, uh, you know, they were talking about build. We Jesus was saying, look, build your house on me. And so... This is what we were talking about last week. It's amazing, man. And welcome back to Growing in His Word. God bless you guys. What a, what a radical time we're going to have today. We're, uh, if you're listening to this sermon right now, it's uh, Christmas Day. And uh, yeah, man, I'm preaching. I don't stop for Christmas. I don't stop for holidays. I don't really stop for nothing. Jesus doesn't stop. The Word of God goes forward. Look, God is good. He loves you guys. It's His birthday. And... I'm excited, man. Listen, last week we talked about the false prophets, man, and that they're going to be here. They're going to come into your life. They're going to try to deceive you. And not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we prophesied in your name, casted out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Listen, the parables of the two builders in Luke chapter 6, okay, and also, uh, you know, Matthew here, chapter 7, it's, you hear sermons about this actual chapter about the house being beat down and how, you know, when, when, when the rain came and it says, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. A lot of people don't get it that the rock is not the wrestler. It's the rock, Jesus Christ. The rock is not something that we throw at people. But last week, I had to throw some rocks at some false prophets and false pastors, who claim to be a follower, but yet when their church people, the believers in that church are hungry and have no money, lose their job, have no place to go in the rain, living in their car, lost their jobs, they come to the church and the church says, be warm and be filled, we have no money for you. I think it's a false prophet or a false teacher because The Bible doesn't teach that we should go out and not help others. The whole message of the Bible of Jesus Christ is to love others and serve others and to be grateful that God has came and brought his son to die for us on the cross. That's the message. In Hebrew, we say hatikva. Hatikva is the hope, the hope that one day we'll be with Jesus Christ in paradise and not worry and so this sermon was, is taught, this parable of the two builders is, the key is the rock is don't, don't hang out with teachers who don't teach the Bible verse by verse. Don't go to churches that don't teach the Bible verse by verse. If you go to a church right now and it's in the, and the message is, is is anything but the gospel get out leave don't stay there you're not going to grow the only one that's going to grow is the pastor's wallet and so last week we talked about how the touchy feely message it feels real good oh everyone looks good today and and they play these silly games and so we talked about this message that the rock is Jesus Christ but everyone who hears these saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And so 
He's saying, Jesus Christ is saying, don't go to silly romper room churches who play with silly putty all day. And you may think, come on, man, that's not nice. No, listen, what's not nice is when a false pastor steals the message of hope. When a false pastor reads the Bible and interprets it his way and not the Holy Spirit's way. So, Father, we come before you right now. And, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit right now preach this gospel because I, 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 I suck. I'm just a man, Lord. I have no, Lord, I went to school, but Lord, it's all you, Father. It's all about you, Lord. Teach your way, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, that's the teacher. The Holy Spirit says, I will teach you all things. Jesus Christ is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But everyone who hears this, verse 26 of of Matthew chapter 7, but everyone who hears this, these sayings of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Jesus is saying, when the rains come down, when when the rains descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. Listen, Jesus is saying, don't run away. When, When trials come, don't run away. When you lose your job, don't run away. God will get you another one. When you lose your wife, don't worry, she's in heaven. God will provide another one. When you lose your dog, when it runs away and never comes back, yes, I've had that happen to me. And I was nice to the dog, but I guess huskies, they just keep going. <laughs> when they run away, it's because there's, it's a reason for it. There's reasons why believers have to understand that God, is, God does things and allows things for it to happen. But don't run away. When the devil is beating your finances, don't run away. It's temporary. Build your house on the rock. Many people tell me, hey, pastor, listen, I got a situation here, man, and I can't blah, 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 blah. And I tell them, are you reading the Bible? Not really. That's why. Because if you're not reading the Bible, then you will not see the whole big picture. So Jesus is saying, build your rock I am the rock, and, 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 and trust in me, Jesus says. Not, not pastor, not Billy, not whoever it is, but trust in the Lord. And you may be going through a situation where you're, you're, you think you're stuck, but you're as stuck as you want to be stuck. You can keep going. You can keep going forward. You could even, if it doesn't go in, 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 in forward gear, you could put it in reverse. And Jesus says, I will forgive you for your sins and I will move you forward. But Jesus is the way. And so false teachers try to uh, do perform false miracles. And the key differences here are that the two houses is not their external appearance. And Pharisees and scribes may seem to be as righteous as the heirs of the kingdom. But the key in this story is, is the foundations. So the house of the rock pictures a life of, 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 of founded on proper, uh, on a very good proper relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, when the problems arise and the winds come, you got to stand, you know, and it'll stand the test of Christ's judgment. But the house on sand will fail the test. If you're grounded on sand, you're going to fail the test. And so many times, contractors, they don't build right. The other day, I was out in the construction field. Believe it or not, listen, I don't, I don't, it's weird. God has put this sermon out here, this very old sermon, and I'm living it. I, I'm actually living it. But listen to this. I walk by a, a construction site, and I see the, the, the tractors, and they're not even doing it right, man. I know because I was in construction. You got to survey it. You got to do this. They weren't surveying it right. I've done it before. They weren't doing the tractors right. And now I told them later that foundation is going to slip. Rains came months later and their foundation slipped and they lost like $3 million with a building. Believers, don't build your house on sand. Build it on Jesus. 
So when things happen in your life, no matter what they are, car accidents, death, cancer. I've had cancer, man. I, I, I'm, I still fight it, believers. Listen, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. I'm not on here asking for a donation. You know, I don't, I don't pray for me. That's a better donation when you say, I'm going to pray for Pastor Joseph and his cancer on his, you know, whatever. And, and, and that's even better because I have Jesus. And so verse 28 says of, of Matthew chapter 7, we're going to go into 8, but I wanted to recap. It says, and so it was when Jesus has ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In chapter 8 of Matthew, the leper is going to be cleansed, and this is how it goes. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And can you imagine this nasty, pussy-looking leopard? I mean, I have seen some nasty stuff working in the hospitals. But this is the nasty of nasty. Can you imagine? Jesus is there now. Listen, close your eyes. or not, If you're driving, don't close your eyes. But just picture this. <laughs> Please keep your eyes open if you're driving. I got to be careful because I'm on iHeartRadio and every, everywhere else. The Lord is, not me. And people, I, I get emails all the time. But imagine you're, dri- you're not driving. <laughs> this leopard comes up and Jesus is standing there, Right? And he says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You notice the word willing, willing, willing. Remember that word willing because willing is important because it indicates genuine faith. Listen, it does not necessarily mean that if one simply believes God will do something, but that he can do it. Look at Daniel 3.17. Normally touching a leopard would result in a ceremonial defilement. That's the law. You see, he's in Israel. He's in the Jewish state of Israel. And you see Leviticus chapter 14, verse 45, and Numbers chapter 5, and Deuteronomy chapter 24. You see, this is the Old Testament of the Jewish law, the halacha. You can't touch. It is a ceremonial process in somebody with leprosy. But listen to this. In, in this case, then Jesus says in verse 3, it, he, it says in verse 3, then Jesus put out his hand. Imagine this. He puts his hand out. He doesn't get on a pulpit and have the big old bands playing and the church playing and whoo, it's warming up. Here comes the drum roll. He don't have a line of people with $20 bills in his hand to get cleaned. I mean, I'm serious. I went to a church and I've seen, I, I kid you not, I've seen a pastor with five lines. I walk into the church, and there's one line with dollar bills. There's one line with $20 bills. There's a $50 line, a $100 line, and a $10 line. And he sat there, and he said, a real man who love Jesus, a real man that loves Jesus has the hundred dollar line. And I lost it. You see, he's claiming that he can heal faster with a hundred bucks. This is, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is what, this is the kind of garbage I'm talking about. Get it out of your church. Maybe God will spare you in the end, you fool. And so then Jesus puts out his beautiful hand. Listen to this. And he touched him saying, I'm willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. He didn't say, now give me my 50 bucks or 100 bucks. He said, I am willing. Jesus Christ is willing to heal you. And if you have faith, he will heal you. But there is a lot of people who preach falsely and say, you're the one who didn't get healed because you didn't have faith, which is a lie. 
Okay? Believers, you have to understand that these are miracles that only God can do. They happen today in hospitals every day. I used to work in a hospital and I seen miracles like this every day. They're called MD doctors. They go to school for 10 years. They do a residency. They learn about cancer. They learn about surgeries and they save lives. They don't put people on pulpits and pray over them and say, you're healed. You know, it can happen. I'm not saying it doesn't. But with the help of doctors, I believe this is the real life example. And Luke was a physician, believers. Luke was a beautiful physician. And I recommend the book, Dear Glorious Physician. Listen, verse three is beautiful because Jesus is saying, then Jesus put his hand and he touched it. I'm willing to be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you do not, listen to this, see that you do, that you tell no one, but go your way yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. You see, this is the messianic, first messianic, one of the messianic uh, miracles and prophecy. Plus, he didn't want the Jewish people to get all riled up, man. Jesus was like, You know, he wanted them to obey the law of Moses, but also to be a testimony to the religious authorities in Jerusalem that the Messiah had arrived, parked his car in Jerusalem, got out, and commanded the man to keep quiet because he did not want Jewish people to act really crazy on and and get all psycho because they were like tripping out, man. Like, wow, because the Messiah in his kingdom is all about, it's, you know, these are all the fulfillments that happened and he didn't get on seat on these TV stations and say, look at me. <laughs> he did it, so he did it, you know, loving and mercifully and, he, and willingly. You see, we can't force God to do things that we don't want. Some things don't happen in life because there are a reason. For, you may ask yourself, Man, you don't understand I'm divorced. Well, and you can't find a reason why. And she never told you or he never told you. Well, guess what? They got to tell God. One day they got to stand before God if they're believers. And if they're not believers, they're going to stand before God. There's reasons why we go through the things we do. Well, you've never been homeless. Yes, I have. It sucks. It's cold. You've never been hungry. Yes, I have. I've been hungry and thirsty. But yet I've stayed the course and banked on my faith in Jesus that he would continue in my life and help me. And it's all about Christ. It's all about us focusing on the love of Christ and having faith. You know, like the, like the centurion servant in Luke chapter 7. Now, verse 5 says, Now then, when Jesus had entered Capernaum and came to my city, I used to eat my falafels over there and drink my soda. A centurion came to him pleading with him. Okay, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully, and tormented. Now, I don't know if you ever had a back injury, man, but can you imagine, you know, laying down and you're just in pain and it sucks. I I threw out my back one day and it just hurts so bad, man. I, I think I've been through everything, man. That's why God has me preaching. But I had to be carried out by a friend of mine who was a deputy sheriff and he was, you know, I mean, he... He helped me out. I had a friend of mine. He, he helped me out. He carried me outside and took me to the chiropractor. And, and man, it hurts. But listen to this. I mean, it was so bad. I called 911. I couldn't get out of bed, man. And the cops came in and they're like, here, get up. <laughs> the ambulances couldn't get me. <laughs> and they carried me out, man. It, it's bad. Here's the centurion, man. You know, 
He's paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion, listen to this, you guys. This is so radical. I love it. He answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, do this and he does that. He does it. Here he's saying, I, I, I make my commands to my soldiers and they do what they say. And listen to this. And when Jesus heard it in verse 10, in chapter 8 of Matthew, it says, He marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith. <laughs> not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Unreal, bro. This is crazy. Listen to this. Sit down literally means recline. Just chill out. Recline. Sit down and recline. Listen to this. As a banquet table. Because the coming kingdom is commonly portrayed here in terms of feast. A wedding feast. Revelation 19 talks about that. And these, these are the sons of the kingdom referred to the Jews who had the covenants and the promises and who should have been heirs of the kingdom. But the idea that Gentiles would take their place in the coming kingdom was unthinkable, unthinkable to the Jews. And so, but it's, it's to get, we're together. We can have Christ. We're together. There's no Jew, Greek. Hispanic, black, Indonesian, Asian, we're all together. It's amazing. Jesus died for all of us. Nobody's going to have priority when it comes to Christ. Listen, what I'm saying is nobody's going to be able to say, I'm first, I'm a Jew. I'm first, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm this. I'm first, I'm that. No, Jesus says we are all first. Even though to the Jew first and the Gentile secondly, I'm talking about Christ, man. I'm talking about our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm talking about our Father, our Messianic Father. I'm talking about our believing, radical, awesome uh, family who are all different colors in this world that are beautiful. I love you all. We all are equal. And we have a right to come to the cross boldly with our hands out. And Jesus will forgive us all of our sins. And this is the radical part because if we have faith in Jesus, this is is what it takes to get to heaven. Believing that Christ died for us. Having faith in God is amazing. The word of God is superior than any miracle. And if we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we know that we can, he can heal. If he wants to heal, he'll heal. I've been to so many hospitals where people were dying and I prayed over them and God healed them. I've been to so many hospitals as a leader of Christ and prayed for people and God killed them. <laughs> well, he didn't kill them. He let them die. He took him home. He allowed him to go home. Why? You may be thinking, why? Because God has a special place for people. You don't know. Maybe he needs Christmas lights on his mansion. <laughs> Kidding. It's a joke. Basically, he's, he has a reason for your loved one to take him because he loves him. And he has a beautiful, special place for him. And you'll see him again if you believe in Jesus and have faith that he can heal you through a doctor, an MD, preferably, of your choice. And so I just, I'm very happy that, that, that you guys are writing me and encouraging me. And I'm encouraging you guys out there because this is what it's about. It's about Jesus, man. And so when Jesus heard uh, with the centurion, man, he, he said, yeah, I order him here. I order him there. And he goes there and he goes this and he does it, man. I don't even have to be there, really. Verse 10 says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed. He marveled. He laughed. And he said to those who followed, assuredly, I say to you, 
I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and in the kingdom of heaven. We're all going to feast. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into our outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Because believers, I know you don't want to hear it, but outer darkness is the experience of those who do not endure and so will not reign in the kingdom in heaven. Romans chapter 8, verse 17, and 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, and 2 John 8 and Revelations 3, 11. You, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to sadly burn in hell. It's right there. I mean, I don't like saying these words. You guys know who, how I feel. I, I love to preach the gospel and, and love and mercy, but it says it. It says that if you don't continue in Christ, I mean, if you're saved, you're saved. Nobody has a right to judge who's not saved. Nobody has a right to say you're not going to heaven and you're not going there. It's all Jesus Christ that has the right. But listen, you can't judge people. You can't say you're going to hell, you're going to hell, and you're going to hell. You can't. No one has that right except for God on Judgment Day. And that's what leads a lot of people away from Christ. Judging. Man, when I first got saved, I was like, you're going to burn in hell. All of you guys are going to burn in hell. You need Jesus. And dude, they're like, get away from me, you freak. It's not about burning in hell. God doesn't want people to burn in hell. He says, I don't want anyone to burn in hell. Uh, hell was made for demons and the devil and who follow him. But sadly, if we do not receive Jesus Christ as our Messiah and believe with faith that he is our God and Savior, the possibilities are there. For, that's my belief. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says it. So when you email me, Make sure you include the Bible in there. So when you say, hey, Pastor Joseph, I don't like the way, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be rude. I mean, I was very nice. I mean, this is, it is what it is. So these are the gnashing of the teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you be have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Jesus Christ healed that servant because he had faith and he believed that Jesus Christ could do all things. He believed that God could heal. He believed that God can come through because God can come through for you wherever you are right now. Listen to me, God can come through for you. If you're sitting there doing dope right now, God says, put it away, flush it down the toilet. If you're sitting there uh, hooked on something you shouldn't be, turn it off. If you're doing things that you don't need to be doing right now, Think about the, the, the consequences of what's going to happen to you and think real hard. Christ is in love with you. And if you think that you're better than any, anybody else, you're not. We're all the same. We're sinners. And Jesus is saying, come to me. Listen, have faith that I can heal you. Have faith that I can restore your relationship with me. Have faith that I can come and, and take you in under my arms and teach you my love and mercy and forgiveness. It's all about love, mercy, forgiveness. Love, mercy, forgiveness. God is just. Yes, God is just. There are judges who send their own sons to prison for life, for murder. Same with God. He will sentence you to life in hell if you are a very, 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 very bad, rotten person who deceives and deceives and deceives and deceives all the way to your deathbed and don't believe he will send you to hell and you will gnash into teeth. Listen, Father, we come before you. We thank you for this chapter, Father. We thank you for growing in his word, Lord. Wow. Merry Christmas to the world, Father, and happy Hanukkah to, the, to everybody else. Listen, Lord, we love you, Jesus. We, we, we know that you don't want to send anybody to hell. That's not your plans. Your plans is to save the world. And so, Father, we thank you for the faith that this centurion man had and that we are able to see that we as believers can have faith 
and that you will strengthen us and you will heal us and you will bind up the enemy for us, Father, and you will bless us. So we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, God bless you guys, man. And Merry Christmas. Thank you for growing in his word. And listen, it's all about Jesus. And, and, and I know he was born in the manger. And we hear that story all day long. He was born in the manger. He's born in the manger. Man, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue with this chapter. I'm going to preach through the whole Bible. And God's going to be glorified for it. And, and, and we love you guys. And God bless you guys. And, and thank you again. And uh, hey, God's in control.